Hi, this is Dr. Gary. Welcome to my weekly tune-up this week. Today we're going to welcome a lot of new people that are on the tune-ups. This week we've had a lot of people sign up and for you new people, just in case you're unaware, you can go to a little website called www.thetuneupchannel.com and that is directly linked to our YouTube video site where all of the tune-ups for the last five years are stored. There's literally almost 900 of them stored there for you with all kinds of subjects. So just in case you didn't know that, you can always go there. Also, if you want to be notified each week when I post a brand new tune-up, just subscribe at that channel and you'll be notified via email. Today we're going to do a little bit of what I would call review work for some of you new people that are seeing me maybe for the first time. And there's a certain thing that goes on in our lives when we speak. It's called presuppositions. Now some of you English majors out there definitely know what a presupposition is. But a lot of us mere mortals have a hard time understanding that sometimes. And what a presupposition is, is a certain process in our language that has us presuppose maybe something other than what that person was actually saying to us. Presuppositions come across in literally the way we say things, our body movement, tone of voice, but there's something that's even more sinister within some presuppositions. And I discovered something called virus words. And there are seven virus words that many people use that literally makes people look at you like you're crazy or they do not understand what you're saying or these presuppositions when you use them incorrectly, it presupposes negativity or failure and it literally reprograms your mind for failure. It literally tells you you can't do exactly what you want to do. Now I have many videos on this. I've got a specific program that we did a couple of years ago on Mind Talk that talks about this in depth. But I'm going to give you these virus words right now. You might want to write these down and I can guarantee you if you will eliminate these out of your vocabulary, it's going to change everything for you. People will understand you better. You're going to understand you better and you're going to find that your goals, the things that you actually are going to do, actually get done. The problem with these presuppositions and these virus words are they program other people for doubt and they program you for failure. So here they are. Why, try, need, but, should, don't, and a lot of people want to argue about this one, hope. All right, now think about this for a second. If someone says they're going to come and visit you and they say, I'm going to try to stop by, there's something that rings in your head that says something else. Think about it. Or if somebody owes you $100 and they say, I'll try to pay you by Friday, what do you really hear? See, that's that presupposition that creates the negative thought. The best way to say anything that you want is to say what you want or to say exactly what you're going to do without trying. For example, I'll pay you Friday. So the key is here with presupposed words are the fact that we have to be up time and paying attention to exactly what we're saying in order to really change these in our own life. They are so deeply ingrained in each one of us that we just kind of automatically say them. That's what I call a nested loop. You know, when you just keep talking and you're thinking about something else, but you've said it so many times before, it just comes out. So why? That's another presupposition that we have to be really careful of. Every time you ask someone, why did you do that? It immediately puts them on the defensive. It presupposes they did something wrong and no one wants to do anything wrong. Now we can go a lot deeper on each one of these and many of my videos explain this at a deeper level. So we have why and we have try. Now think about this, but this is the one you can really hear things coming. I call it the naked bud word because <laughs> we can literally hear the punchline and the negative punchline coming when someone says that I think you're a really nice person, but we forgot all that nice person stuff and now we're waiting for the other shoe to drop. So the word but, get rid of it. Use and or 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 just continue to talk without using that virus word. Should. We're shooting all over ourselves all the time. 
I should have done this. I should have done that. Now, here's how ridiculous that word is. And this is the reason it's a virus is when we say the word should, it presupposes we should have known how to do something before we actually learned how to do it. How frustrating is that? And when we say that to someone else, it creates great confusion, complete confusion, and at the same time, a lot of anger, doubt, and distrust in you. Now, the word don't is one we hear all the time. It's hard to miss that word, and we say it so many times. And the problem with the word don't is laced in a, in a formula that we call the neurological law of negation, which states in order not to do something, you first have to think about doing it. The subconscious mind eliminates all negative thinking. It eliminates all negative words that come through that filter. So what happens right after the negation, the negation, I ought to say, is the positive affirmation. So think of this. Don't think of a banana. And you'll notice a banana kind of pops into your head. Or don't see a dog peeing on a fire hydrant. Boy, that's a hard one to miss. You probably saw it because I said don't think about it. When you want someone to do something or you don't want them to do something, tell them what you want them to do. Children all the time get confused about this as we raise them because we say don't go out in the street and all of a sudden they're out in the street. They remember you saying that, but something went into the subconscious that drove them there anyway. So let's work on, work on getting rid of the word don't and change it for the word what you can do. Here's what you choose to do. Now the word need, here's another one. The word need presupposes that the locus of control is outside of yourself, that something else out here has to happen before it can happen inside. The word needs desperation. It creates that deep down inside of us. Rather than needing, let's say we choose, because choose empowers us inside somehow. It's almost a universal modality word that allows us to feel better when we say it. Rather than I need to lose weight, say I'm going to choose to lose weight. Notice how the difference in the way it makes you feel. So need is definitely a virus word. And also the word hope. Now hope in a spiritual sense is good. Hope when you're going to the doctor and he's treating you for a very serious illness and he says I hope this works for you. Notice how that feels. It's a virus word. I hope I can do better in my math. I hope that you and I can get along better presupposes failure. Just focus on what you want and say, let's choose to get along better. Let's choose to do better in our math. And it works much better inside somebody else's head. Those are the virus words. Why, try, need, but, should, don't, and hope. Let's work on those this week. Let's tune up a little bit. Let's work on changing those and becoming more affirmative. And when you do, you're going to find more and more, it's going to change your life. And also for the word try, use the word attempt. It's a much better word, or I will. Until next time, this is Dr. Gary welcoming all of you to the tune-ups. And also, if you'd like to contact me or have questions, just email me. And I would love to hear from you. And if you have ideas or things you'd like me to discuss with you, just let me know what they are.